Hey guys, it's Shola and today I'm going to be telling you how to get an A-star in A-level religious studies. So I got an A-star in AQA religious studies in 2020 and religious studies was by far one of my favourite subjects. I just found it the most enjoyable to do compared to biology and chemistry because it kind of relied less on memorization and more on understanding and essay writing which I really enjoyed and the first tip that I can tell you that helped me the most was practice makes perfect this is such a cliche tip but it's literally the most important you can't expect to get better essays if you don't write them often what I really recommend is especially if you're in year 13 or even if you're in year 12 you should write one essay per week or one essay per fortnight and just give them to your teacher if you get like one of these revision books I don't know what the name is I think it's by Hoda they have questions at the end of the topic or you can just use past papers which you can find online and then give them to your teacher and ask them to mark it um like don't be scared or ashamed because if you keep giving it to them they'll get used to it and they'll give you tips that you probably wouldn't have otherwise realized and you can just continuously get better that's what I did from year 12 to year 13 I probably didn't do one essay per week per se but it did help me and I did see my improvement over the times where I did them. If you want to keep your essays organised, I really recommend that you scan them and then put them into um, your computer or your iPad or whatever. Or you can make a folder and then just put them into their topics so that when it comes to the end of the year, you can just revise from these essays and you'll find it much easier. So how do you actually write essays? Because I feel like teachers do tell you how to learn content and explain things to you, but sometimes you just don't know how to start with an essay. And I have a A star essay structure which I'll be sharing with you now. I'll be going through A01 and A02. We had A01 essays and these essays basically test you on your knowledge and understanding. It's not really about evaluation or arguing or whatever. It's just asking you to explain a concept. In year 13 it was worth 10 marks but in year 12 it was worth 15 marks and the other question, the AO2 question was also 15 marks so it was really important especially in year 12 to get all those marks because this is the easiest question that you're going to get. To get a good mark on this I really recommend that you name drop throughout. So for example if I was to do the design argument I would say that it's by Paley, it was written in 802. I think it was written in natural theology, I can't remember, it's been a while but if you just write books the name, the author, their concepts, you should be good. Um, name dropping does help you get a few marks, but you can't expect to get full marks from just saying Paley wrote about blah blah, that's it. You have to really expand on every single point. And if it's something that has premises, for example, like the ontological argument, the design argument, write it in that order. Give examples if you can, especially examples given by the philosopher themselves. And that will just help you get more marks as well. And to include quotes, that would be amazing because that would just show that you really know what you're talking about and you're not just summarizing something that's in the back of your head. If it's an ethics question, it's really important that you create examples. You really unravel each point that you're making and you don't just say it and then move on. You have to really explain everything that you're saying in order to get full marks. You should aim to fill out at least one page of A4, um, three to four paragraphs, but obviously don't follow this exactly because some people have bigger handwriting and some people have smaller handwriting. But me personally, it took me like one page and maybe a half, but my handwriting gets so big during exams. So that's probably why. So I would really aim for one page. So now I'm going to go on A02 questions, which are much harder than A01. And these were marked out of 15 in year one and year two of A levels. It's really important that you start off strong. So the examiner knows that you know what you're talking about and that you know that this is an A01 and not an A02. The way I would do this is make a really strong thesis. You either agree or disagree. There's no midpoint, there's no midway. So for example, let's say the question said, situation ethics does not provide a clear approach to the issue of abortion. You need to say, I either disagree or agree. You can't say, I think that it kind of, but like it doesn't, no. You have to say, I agree or I disagree. So if I was to answer this question, I could write, situation ethics does not provide an adequate approach to abortion and that's it like you can't just you can't say it kind of but it doesn't no you have to say that straight then you have to explain why but you don't explain it in full detail because you have to expand on that later but you'll just say because it's very contradicting the principles of blah 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 contradict with the principles of this blah blah and then if you are going to name drop this would be the most appropriate time to do it i could link in how situation ethics was written in the book situation ethics the new morality and that it was written by fletcher everyone my a2s i do like four paragraphs but it's not really like four paragraphs it's much longer than that but that's my plan of how I start so first of all I'll start off with paragraph one 
in paragraph one i would do something that agrees with the statement and i know what you're thinking this is very contradictory why would you say something that agrees with the statement when you clearly disagreed but you could say some may argue or situation ethicists may argue that blah 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 and then you just go on and you give an example as well and then you just explain why they would think this way then you'll make another point you add a space between this point and the last point and you'll be like however the previous argument is fallacious because and then you'll explain why you don't think that argument is true and then you could use an example as well just to make it more descriptive you need to show the examiner that you can have a balanced argument but still prove your point more than the other point always make sure that you take a point that you can write a lot about don't pick something that you believe in even though you can't write more than a paragraph of it because it just wastes time and it won't get you a good mark then you have to leave another space and then you have to say though a situation ethicist may think that this is wrong or this is this argument is flawed because and then you just have to write that and probably an example as well if you can find one but yeah and it's really really good to use examples by the author or whatever themselves because it just means that you really know about the content and you know how to use it in an argument which is really good then for paragraph two i would do similar but kind of like opposite so first of all i would start with a point that disagrees with the statement and then i will contact that and do a point that agrees then i'll counteract that again and then do a point that disagrees and this is just kind of like a back and forth argument your last point should always be the same that you agreed with in the thesis it just shows that you know what you're talking about and you're not going back and forth with arguments you're picking one that you truly believe in so make sure you always do that you might have to change the structure that i talked about a little bit but just always make sure that you end off with what you started off with then in the conclusion you will say why you agree with the thesis summarize the points that you've said so you'll probably drop in the most mic drop moment of your essay in the conclusion just to make the examiner be like wow this person really knows what they're talking about and just impress them then if you have time then you'll probably explain why the points that you argued against your thesis is wrong and why yours are better and then you'll just finish off there this may seem like a lot and it is a lot and it took me a while to practice writing this fast and doing this structure so don't expect to get it straight away you need to keep practicing as i said like every week every fortnight and then you'll see yourself improving speed and also in quality and you'll eventually start to get consistent marks especially for a1 once you master that that's good like you just need to explain what's in the question you just need to keep revising and keep on top of your stuff um the way I used to revise for RS in particular wasn't really by flashcards but if you think you can use flashcards then use them but I used to do mind maps like I'll just I'll go through the textbook I'll make a little paragraph for each mini topic in the book in the topic and then I would blurt that out every time that I want to revise that topic that means that I actually had to actively recall it and it saved time of writing flashcards because if you write flashcards for RS there'll be so much on the flashcards that will take you so long to memorize it that way so I really recommend that you blurt you can probably see that in most of my videos where I revise RS I just blurt out I don't really do anything else apart from that so after you finish a topic I recommend that you summarize each topic onto a piece of A4 as I said before or you can use A3 but A4 just makes it more compact and transportable so if you want to bring it to school and bring it home it's really easy what I used to do especially in year 12 was to make computer notes of the textbook because the textbook Books tend to go on and on and on about stuff that doesn't really matter. You can summarize it on words, but towards year 13, I realized that I didn't really have time for that. So I used to use the revision guide that I just got in year 13, and that's a really good summary. What you need to do is just look in the textbook and add extra points from there. Once you do a blur, you should always add in what you didn't remember, and then it'll be much better and much easier that way than to just leave it and then expect yourself to memorize it the next time. And just keep blurting it for days and weeks and months if you need to and then eventually it'll just be part of your common memory so in terms of extra reading i really recommend that you do it especially for rfs if you want to get those top marks and shock your examiner um the best website for this is pephead i think it's for ocr but i did aqa but it's good for literally any exam board that's a level philosophy ethics and christianity is really really good i really recommend it you can just search through the little tags at the top and see what topic you want to go through it might not have every topic but the topics that it does have it does it well like it will have extracts from the author themselves from the philosopher themselves and it's just so much better than just relying on your textbook alone because everyone in the year everyone in the exam is going to rely on their textbook you want to stand out to your examiner so you should make sure they use it and it's called pepper if you don't hear that before but don't go too far don't use this as your main source of revision make sure you always memorize what's compulsory first what's on your specification 
not just extra reading especially extra reading that's not related to your specification like it won't impress anyone it'll just confuse the examiner because you're not really answering the question and my final tip which is relevant for literally almost every a level is a retrospective timetable it's not good enough to just have those basic timetables where you say i'm going to do biology on monday i'm going to do rs on tuesday i'm going to do this on wednesday it's good but it's not good enough i recommend that you make that obviously make that and then you should make a retrospective timetable which basically has the topics of each subject on the side and then you put the dates that you're going to cover those topics if the topic went good then you'll mark it as green and you might cover it in a week or two if it was okay you can put orange and go over it in like three days and if it was completely and utterly bad then do red and just go over it in like one or two days and that'll be much better you can do this on excel or notion or google sheets it doesn't really matter when you reach that date make sure you do something active it's not just reading from the textbook or reading extra reading if you're going to do extra reading you should probably take some notes and summarize it just to make sure you're doing something active if you just passively read it won't go into your brain and you have to add it to your notes as well if you're going to do something else then you should do flashcards or blurting or writing an essay that's like the most acceptable things to do unless you want to do content which is good like sometimes in rs i used to get ahead so that when i was in the lesson all i had to do was add to my notes i recommend that you do that in year 13 once you master your essay structure and you're getting consistent grades throughout and that's basically everything i did to get an a star in religious studies i hope i helped and i hope you learned something new if you haven't already make sure to subscribe because this video took so many takes it was actually unbelievable but yeah make sure to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys next time Bye.